ritual. Nothing you need to concern yourself with. Several people I've spoken to have described Jolly Rover as Monkey Island with dogs. And that's not exactly inaccurate. It is a pirate themed adventure game after all. But to casually liken a run of the mill, casual friendly adventure to Monkey Island, one of the greatest games ever made, is just offensive. Not that I'm condemning this game as being terrible or anything, just pointing out that anyone who calls this Monkey Island with dogs needs a slap, because this is not Monkey Island with dogs. You play as Gaius James Rovery, funny little sausage dog whose polite, non-threatening nature obviously owes more than a little to Guybrush. You find yourself on board a pirate ship, first as prisoner and later as crew member. And then there's a villain, and then there's a girl, and then the villain kidnaps the girl. Does it sound familiar? The thing with the story isn't that it's treading very familiar ground, it's that there just isn't really much of it. It hits all the major beats you'd expect from a Boy Saves Go plot, but as the game is only four hours long, everything happens so fast that certain important things in the story are completely missed. For instance, you unsurprisingly save the girl and sail off into the sunset at the end, but you do so without the game ever really establishing that Gaius actually cares for her, or that she cares for him. It all feels very disjointed. It's easy to excuse subpar plots in most games, but in the point and click adventure, the story is much more than just a vehicle for the gameplay, and this game does not live up to the standards of the genre. The gameplay is your usual thing. You move your guy with the mouse, you inspect items, talk to NPCs, pick up stuff and collect and combine items to solve puzzles. Jolly Rover, in attempting to appeal to a more casual audience, has added some questionable ingredients into the mix. The points system, for instance. Everything you do earns or costs you points. So your successes are rewarded in the most computer gamey way imaginable. Collect an item, earn some points. Solve a puzzle, earn some points. On the flip side, and where it's more interesting, is that if you shortcut through a puzzle, which I'll talk about later, you lose points. Given that the points have no actual function besides earning you an achievement, it's a moot issue, but it does seem like an idea that could have been explored in more gameplay oriented ways. In a well designed adventure game, not that I'm necessarily saying this isn't a well designed game, progress is its own reward. Sugarcoating it with an utterly superfluous point system just seems like a total waste to me. To be fair, it doesn't detract from the experience, but what it represents really bothers me. But what certainly does detract from the experience is the hint system. If you've ever seen a point and click adventure review of mine in the past, you'll know that I like hint systems, provided the player has no real control over it, or they'll just hint their way through the entire game. Jolly Rover is very guilty of this. You carry a little parrot companion around with you, and any time you get stuck or aren't sure what to do, you can ask him. He'll usually give you a general idea of what to do, but if you want a more detailed explanation, you'll need to feed him a cracker. This is great! Limiting the player's ability to hint with a limited resource is exactly how the idea should work. Except crackers are found everywhere in Jolly Rover. There is something like 90 in the game, and while you probably won't find them all, that's still more than enough for you to hint your way through every single instance where you may become stuck. Hinting is a slippery slope. You only need to hint once, and then you're guilty of the crime. And committing it a second, or third, or twentieth time comes easily after the first time. Once you've peaked once, there's no harm in peaking again, right? That's what open hint systems do to you, but having hint systems is definitely better than having no hint systems, as that would probably just push players into using internet walkthroughs. A hint system can lead the player to the solution without just handing it over outright, and still imparts that sense of satisfaction and player participation, while walkthroughs certainly can't. But it has to be limited, you have to pay your dues, either by limiting how many times the player can hint, or how often, or by taking the hinting out of the control of the player entirely, or through other factors. Having an unlimited hinting system, or effectively unlimited hinting system in this case, is really just no different to bundling a walkthrough with your game. And that's just what Jolly Rover does, which is actually surprising because, as a companion to the crackers, are the silver coins. Silver coins are a much better idea. There are certain puzzles throughout the game that can be skipped by paying silver coins. For instance, a guard you want to get past, you can take him out using a puzzle, or you can just bribe him. While this is just as much cheating, or chinting, 
as I've uh, come to call it, as using crackers, the coins are a much more limited resource and can only be used on certain puzzles. So it feels like a sort of a, a neat little alternate solution rather than just skipping content. You also get a points deduction for using coins, but as I said, that's a pretty moot issue since the points are completely worthless. Really, I just don't see why they couldn't have included difficulty levels based around the crackers. When you have 50 crackers in your inventory, even if you choose to not use them, you can't ignore that they are there when judging how difficult the game is. You can't appeal to everyone with one set of rules, but when those rules are so easily changed, why not allow them to be changed? If the goal is to appeal to as many people as possible, adding difficulty levels would only help. I'm pretty frustrated by the state of this genre right now. Game developers mastered the idea of difficulty levels decades ago. Why are adventure game developers not able to do the same? If you're going to make a game with a hint system, add a mechanism to balance it for the people who still want a challenge. As a counter-argument, you might want to say that you can just choose to not use them. But it's not right to force people to self-regulate. That's like a first-person shooter developer making an easy game then saying, if you want a challenge, just use pistols for the whole game. That's not how things are done, with good reason. As far as the puzzles go, they're pretty good. They have a solid foundation of logic so you aren't likely to get stuck because of some annoying, obtuse idea you overlooked and probably wouldn't ever figure out naturally. And there are some interesting deviations from the more standard collect and combine puzzles like matching a secret knock through a series of clicks. These puzzles are pretty uncommon though, this definitely isn't Puzzle Agent. Most of the items you collect are used in the immediate area or nearby, so there isn't too much running back and forth required. You're also often sitting on several puzzles at once and it's always cool to see how they come together. To simplify things, holding space highlights all the assets in the environment with which you can interact, so you aren't pixel hunting. I'm not fond of the idea at all, as I believe there has to be a happy medium that exists between pixel hunting and highlighting, but I'm not going to condemn a game for not finding it when I don't know what it is myself. Topping it all off is the Voodoo system, which, for those who remember it, is essentially the same as the draft system from LucasArts' Loom. By collecting and combining items, and then by performing a series of actions found on your Voodoo cheat sheet, you can cast spells like Heat Up Iron, Scare Animals, and Raise the Dead. It's a pretty good mechanic and it adds diversity to the puzzles, if not depth, but it is an idea that's been done before. Unsurprisingly, this is a comedy game, and it is pretty funny. One of the funniest things about it is the general piratey nature. The game really embraces its piratey side in all aspects of its design, but mainly there are really only three actual jokes used in the game, used over and over. Monkey Island references, self-aware, fourth wall-breaking references about game design, and jokes about Gaius' incompetence as a pirate. It certainly would change the dynamic of the game if that gun were in working order. No superfluous collectibles in the barrel. The developers got a great deal of mileage out of all three, and as the game is only four hours long, it's over before they begin to wear thin. But this game definitely isn't Sam and Max. There are no full belly laughs. I was mostly just chuckling now and then, but yeah, it is pretty funny, and the humour definitely makes the game go down more easily. There are two things I really do like in this game. One is the audio commentary. I'm going to praise every single audio commentary game, right from Escape from Butcher Bay until the end of time. Commentaries give games great replay value and also give insight into the design process, which is something I find fascinating. And it's something I'd like to see become standard for all games, like it is with pretty much all DVDs. The commentary covers a range of design topics and also features things like cast audition. I didn't want to play through the whole game a second time, so I didn't give the whole of the commentary a listen, but what I did here was interesting. I originally thought of director's commentary as a cheap way of extending the play of Jolly Rover. I must admit, I borrowed the idea from Portal, but in truth, I was only compelled to listen to the director's commentary. Another thing I like, and it's something I really like, is that you have a movement speed slider for Gaius in the options. One of my biggest problems with adventure games is that they're slow. But they're not just slow, they're needlessly slow. Some games get through it by having the game flick to the next screen immediately if you click on the edge of an area. Others have a run animation for a double click. These are both adequate. 
but the run slider is pretty much perfect. And it's the first time I've ever seen it in a point and click adventure, at least that I can remember. If you want guys to zip around at 50 miles an hour, you just pump the slider up to max and you're sorted. Presentation is really good quality for an indie adventure. The voice acting is uniformly great, though I dislike the voice of the main character, while the music and sound effects are pleasant and appropriate. The visuals are very nice, and I always enjoy the hand-drawn aesthetic, but the animations are pretty iffy overall. Jolly Rover is by no means a bad game, but there's just absolutely nothing special about it, and the way it appeals to a broader audience may alienate the very people most likely to buy the game in the first place, particularly as far as the difficulty is concerned. I found the whole collectibles slash score aspect of the game superfluous and tedious, while the hint system is far too generous. Overall, it's a flawed but decent adventure game, and it is worth playing.